Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bish's RV with something a little bit different today. Uh, after doing this a number of years and listening to uh, lots of different owners come in and share their stories, um, and to, uh, paying attention to like to the different RV user groups and owners forums and stuff like that, I've kind of compiled a little bit of a list based on actual user, owner, and feedback. Very little of this is actually my personal opinion. Although the, the one thing, the one hill I am willing to die on completely in this list, I think you'll find that pretty much everyone will also agree with. I've come up with a list of things here for you to consider not spending your money on. Save your money, either don't get it, uh, or potentially just get a better version of it rather than going cheap the first time. That's what I wanna to do today. My goal is to always try to help you find your second thing the first time around, and usually that's related to a full-size RV, and sometimes it's uh, it needs to also be related to the little widgets and whiz bangs. So let's get started, and if you appreciate little videos like this, hit that subscribe button if you're new with us. Leave me a little comment. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the things that we cover here today, and it's totally cool if you disagree. I am no authority on this stuff. My word is not the law. And all I ask is, if you do disagree, um, don't be a troll about it. <laughs> so kicking things off, the first thing I recommend you just skip the cheap wheel chocks. They're very lightweight, they're inexpensive, I get that. And for people who camp casually, you're like, man, I just, I just don't wanna spend more than I have to. And that's why we still keep them on the shelf here. But frankly, for me, for my money, and just even the little bit that I do actually get to camp, I would skip these things in a heartbeat. They always end up wiggling loose no matter how hard I mail them in place. Then again, with my chicken arms, I might just not have the strength to really whack them all those things in place the way you're supposed to. But these things also expire and decay over time and eventually will just start to like rot out and crumble and fall apart. Well, instead, I'd recommend getting these, the big heavy duty rubber wheel chock suckers here with the handy rope that kind of connects them. Chances are you want to stabilize more than one spot anyway, so having them hooked together is just one less way to try to lose stuff. They do run a little bit more money, but it's to me it's just the, the better buy. Even camping casually, for me, this is probably what I would go with here because they just work better. They work on wide stance axles. They work on any type of RV, really. It doesn't matter what type of RV or what sort of suspension or anything you have. This will just help keep the thing from rocking and rolling around. They don't wiggle loose near as much, um, even if you're uh, aggressively folding long laundry um you get the idea uh but the other thing that's cool with these i think my friends jason and abby at rv miles said it best when you when you're messing around with these you you sort of feel like you're um playing around with airplanes <laughs> so what about these guys wait a minute like i said these guys x chocks um i'm a big believer in these things i've done some wiggle jiggle uh testing very unscientific unofficially where i got an rv and i just wiggle jiggled around a lot to see how much I could get the RV to move. And these by far did the best job of stabilizing the RV without the stabilizers down on the ground on the actual RV, really just testing what did these provide for us. Um, and I think that if you're going to bounce around place to place, weekend to weekend, I think that these can be great. Um, if you're going to be in one place for a long time, if you really cinch these down, there have been some people who have expressed concerns that they may actually like start biting into the tire and creating like bad spots divots actually just damaging destroying the tire uh, i think that that's more theoretical than practical i think you're going to have to really cinch these things down to uh become a become an issue i do like these a lot though especially the new varieties that have like a lock on them so that somebody walking by can't just take these because these ain't necessarily cheap but the rubber aircraft carrier styles or these things just get something good to stabilize your RV. And obviously you can't use these on a single axle camper, but uh, they do make varieties of these for wide stance uh, RVs. That's a that's something that they didn't used to do years ago, but for the last couple of years, they have been offering a wide stance stability version of uh, various x chocks from a couple different suppliers. Next up is something I've talked about before, although in um, very opinionated terms. And that's something that I don't want to do here uh, because there there are always pluses and, and minuses to anything, certainly. But washer dryers and more specifically combo units. Um, I, I see so many people who have never camped before, who've never stepped foot in an RV before, just bound and determined, convinced they have to have a washer dryer in an RV. Yet, still to this date, less than 2% of washer dryer prepped RVs ever have a unit installed. And it almost reminds me of like a microwave in a hotel. If you ask a lot of people, do you need uh, a microwave available in your hotel room to feel confident in booking that? A lot of people say yes. 
But then you ask the same people, did you use it? They're like, well, no, never. It, it's just it's one of those funny things. So here's why I say this, especially in relation to uh, washer-dryer combo units. And hear me out. Um, they use a ton of water. Combo units also use, uh, they, they can handle very, very small loads. You can't really put any uh, big load of laundry in there. And if you have, like, loads of sheets or something, you're probably going to have to find a public laundry man to handle them anyway. Uh, stackable units or side by sides, but separated uh, separated units. They're a little bit better in that regard, in that you can put a little bit bigger uh, loads in them. But like if you have say even on site sewer, uh, where the the gray tank holding capacity of your RV is less of an issue because you could just pull the valve and let it flush out after every load or whatever. You're still gonna be running that thing all day, every day that you're hooked up on that. Like, take the clothes you wore yesterday, cut them in half, and wash those today. Like, they take a lot of time. Again, the stackable units are better. The other thing is these are way more expensive than a lot of people realize. And maybe for some people it's about the convenience and the peace of mind and not about the money. I can totally respect that. There are a lot of public laundry areas. Some are skeevy and some are very nice. If you actually look at the machines, many of the machines, because of their frequency of use, tend to be pretty clean on the inside. And if they're not, then don't wash your underwear there, you know? Nobody wants to catch somebody else's fuzzy bugs. I get that. My suggestion and my recommendation here, you can always install a washer dryer unit later. Try it first a time or two without it. Do you feel like you're still lacking a feature that without it you cannot enjoy the camping or the RV lifestyle and experience? Then get one put in. You could always do it later, but I, I don't see the sense in spending potentially multiple thousands of dollars or something that a lot of people report really not using or regretting having purchased. And again, this is, I, I know that I've been very opinionated and talks about RV washer dryers previously, but what I'm sharing today is feedback based off what I see from owners and what I hear from people who come in or trade in their RV. Say, oh, you've got a washer dryer. You want to keep that in, uh, move that to your new camera? They're like, I never use the thing. Would you give me some money for it if I left it behind? You know, that's the normal response that we hear from most people. At least what I hear. Maybe my experience is different. But uh, that right there could be something that might save you thousands of dollars. But again, you could always just apply it later. Now, I probably should have made this next one number two on the list, but the next entry here, big budget butt napkins. You see a lot of these things, um, and I've kind of talked about this in the past. It's not necessarily wrong. You don't want to use just any toilet paper in your RV, uh, you know, down your toilet, in your holding tanks. Uh, you want toilet paper that is designed to break down more quickly, especially when used in conjunction with, you know, RV chemical toilet tank treatment uh, tablets and, and add-ins and all that stuff. The thing is, it doesn't necessarily have to be the really expensive stuff that you find at some places. This can be a huge profit center for, for, for some... It's incredible. It's almost like when you go to the movie theater, popcorn and soda, that's where they make all their money. They break even on the ticket prices for the movie half the time. That's where they make their money. That's why they don't want you sneaking in snacks. Um, <laughs> I sneak in snacks. Anyway. <laughs> but uh, my, my point here is... There are other things that you can get that might be a little more comfortable because I think some of us who have used this stuff, I call it John Wayne toilet paper because it's tough as grit and don't take spit off nobody. I said spit, by the way. Don't report me to H&R Block. Um, what I'm getting at here is find the toilet paper that you like, but make sure it says septic safe on the... I probably should have held the package uh, right side up, but make sure it says septic safe on it. If it's septic safe... Um, Basically, as long as you use a lot of water, and that's the key right there, as long as you use a lot of water in your holding tanks and down that toilet, you can use septic safe toilet paper, some of which actually will shred itself and break down more quickly than the, the fancy big budget butt napkins over here. So uh, you, you don't have to rub your backside raw. You do have a couple other options out there. That right there is, uh, is a nice one. Sometimes, sometimes you can actually get them for less money too. Now moving on, this one, may trigger a couple people. This is one of those things kind of like a washer dryer. It works very well for some people, but they are not necessarily like the a generic thing that works really well for everybody. And that's slide out awnings. And that might sound a little strange, but because uh, there's a lot of people, the general perception with these is that they are categorically superior than not having them there. 
So why am I offering you this kind of uh, insight again, saying maybe go camping a couple times without them, and if you really feel like you gotta have them, maybe add them later, because they can always be added later. Um, Slide awnings in certain circumstances are fantastic. If you camp uh, where there's like a lot of tree coverage, a lot of crap that falls uh, down onto your slide, it is nice to have to get up there and clean them off. But I think what happens is they lull people into a false sense of security, thinking that the slide awning magically makes their slide out uh, basically bulletproof and maintenance free. And like I said, if you're in an area where there's a lot of stuff that falls on them, they can be really, really nice. But, um, a big slide awning like this one if it's raining cats and dogs it's just gonna collect water i think a lot of people think of it like it's going to be like your main awning and there's going to be a lot of uh you know watershed runoff with a light rain yeah you'll probably get that but with a heavy rain they the the, the material will slack because there's usually extra material in that roller and it will just basically lay down or it will uh, create like a bucket effect and it will collect water on top of that slide and typically one of the only ways you can get it off a big slide is by retracting the slide. But talk to people who have been through this experience and they will confirm for you. What you can't do is just sit there and run the slide closed and run it back out. Because the slide awning is laying on top of the slide, it will tend to like get pulled in and pinched between the, uh, the the slide seal and the slide wall and the roof of the slide. It gets caught in there. So you have to like work it in slow but sure, slow but sure, and try to get under there with something and, and lift it a little bit and get some of that water off there and it can be kind of a process. Now combine that with certain slides that are on like Schwintech slide mechanisms, which should not be only partially opened or retracted. They should be done all the way in or all the way out. And you can very quickly create for yourself a tricky, sticky situation. Um, Again, this is one of those things. Oh, and here's another thing. If you live in like wind country where it could get under that slide awning and cause it to flap, it will start smacking the top of your slide out box and it could actually tear the roof membrane on top of the slide box because the slide box roof is basically like the main cabin roof most of the time. Although on a motorhome, sometimes you have fiberglass or whatever. You get the idea though. Um, it, can, it can actually cause impact damage on your RV. So that's why the vast majority of RVs are built without those because there's no way to predict if uh, you know you're going to be a good quality candidate for those now they can also provide some benefits they can help keep that uh, slide out shaded kind of like the main awning that you'd sit under if you're not under direct sunlight it tends to keep the heat down in that slide very handy if you have a gas electric two-way fridge installed in a slide box by the way just anything you can do to help allow it to, to breathe and keep up since they do cool more slowly that can be a benefit Again, though, I would recommend camping a time or two before you add them to see if you need them. And then if you really feel you do, you can always add them later. Um, if you look at some of my older videos when I had the opportunity to cover trade-ins, you would see so often, though, if somebody had any problems with the slide awning, they would just cut the fabric off and leave the hardware installed because it just wasn't worth it to them. They didn't find enough benefit to even bother replacing it. I think that says a lot. Now, if you're stationary, the next tip might not necessarily apply to you. But if you're going to be mobile, don't get like traditional dishware. Don't get ceramic kind of stuff, glass, things that can break. Think of it like um, if you were packing up in a moving truck to move everything in your house. When it comes to packing plates, like you wrap and pack every one of those things individually because it's about to endure a rolling earthquake. Well, your RV is no different. Chances are you start stacking this stuff together, it ain't gonna last long. And if you are a little more affluent and hoity-toity than the China paper plate, which there's nothing wrong with that, by the way, you're, you're gonna wanna get some kind of, you know, plastic plate, that kind of stuff. You can hear the difference when it, it hits something hard and hollow, right? But uh, the fact is, thankfully, there are a lot of like really cute different prints you can get here. Uh, also for your cups, tin or like stainless tumblers or anything like that. What is this? Mike, what is this? Stainless camping wine glass? Don't show my wife this. I'm gonna have to buy a set of these if she sees this video. Get the idea, you wanna hear it? You wanna hear a little tink tink instead of a crack smash. Now, another thing that I've done videos on before, but I still see people ask about regularly, are uh, like slide jack supports, basically. Something you put under a slide out to help support it from the bottom up. At this point in the marketplace, unless you have a very, very old RV that has really stood the test of time, I am 100% opposed to these things. I do not think they're a good idea for your RV. I get that that's a very strong statement, but I am willing to back it up. So there's several different types of slides out there. I've actually, I, I 
believe at this stage I might have a video on different slide types. I've, I've probably got a couple. Regardless, neither here nor there. If, if you're curious, leave me a note. I'll see if I can dig one up and, and send you a link in the comments. But different type of slide systems operate in different ways. And RVs are built differently now than they used to be. It used to be if you had a big slide and you were going to stay somewhere with that thing out a long time, you really wanted to put a support stand under it because they just weren't built the way that they are now. And you're wondering, well, how old are we talking? Probably upwards of 15 plus years old, if not older than that, you probably shouldn't be using slide support stands. Um, there's a couple reasons for it. No matter how well stabilized something is, as you move around, the body of the RV still moves a little bit. Now, this is definitely more true of like a, a common class travel trailer than say like a, a, a big auto leveling fifth wheel or something like that. But the fact is any of them do move a little bit. And if the body of the RV is moving a little bit, to maintain your slide seals and to maintain everything square so the slide and the box of the RV are moving at the same rate, you can't have isolated the movement of the slide out. They have to move together. Otherwise, um, like if the, a rack and pinion slide, if you lift it up from the bottom, it's literally the weight of the slide that helps the, the fact the slide is trying to fall out of the RV, but the wall is strong enough to hold it from doing that is literally what compresses the seals. So if you lift up on that, or if the wind blows the RV toward the slide out, but the slide out doesn't move, it will cause the slide and the slide seals to gap for a minute and allow water in. And it doesn't take a lot of water to start causing a problem, you know, and, and you might actually be doing that in a self-inflicted fashion. Not to mention some slide systems are designed like Schwintex to go straight in, straight out, happy jacks. If you start lifting up on that and twisting things, you could break slide motors, uh, gears, all sorts of things. So long story short, at this point, pretty much any RV that you're going to find at a dealership or pretty much any private seller, just stay away from slide support jacks like pretty much all the time. Now, when this video began, I said there was one thing that I'm very strongly opinionated about, a hill that I will die on a thousand percent of the time. And that is do not waste your money on just the cheapest sewer hose you can possibly get. These things are crap, Mike. Now in this last one, I'm going to need some of your help. Again, I'm going to need to kind of uh, source the community and ask you to chime in in the comment section with a product that you feel does a good job in this. But if you just get the very dollar cheapest variety of sewer tank treatment stuff, it might do a decent job of uh, beginning that chemical breakdown process to break down the solid mass or the toilet paper to get everything to come out of the black tank properly, but it might not do a little good job of the uh, the odor control factor, the, the smell of vision 101. Um, some brands, uh, usually not the cheapest things, do a better job of that. And again, I don't want to sound like I'm specifically plugging any one product over the other because I've used a couple different things and I found that they were perfectly sufficient. One of the things you got to watch out for, especially with these drop-in pods, you need to read the packaging to see how many gallons of water each packet is designed to treat. Then you need to check the black tank holding capacity of your RV. If an RV has like a 45 gallon holding tank and this is only designed to treat 30 gallons of water, well, do the math. You're in the red and you're going to feel like you're in the brown. At least that's how you're going to smell. So you can always double up the packet like Sir Mix a lot. But uh, it's also nice just to have something that's it's made to do a better job. So again, I would ask people who have camped for a long time, help out some of the newer people or maybe a person struggling, leave a little comment with like the brand of tank treatment or packs or you know uh, the, the, the loose liquid that you can measure put in. What is the one that you feel does the best job of keeping that odor under control? Now the thing is, almost everything that you've seen today are things that we have on the shelf back here. These are parts that sometimes people still request or want, or again, maybe a super casual camper just wants the cheap wheel chocks or whatever. We do offer these things. And certainly, we make money when we do that. And I just got done putting together a video telling you, don't spend your money on these things. I hope you appreciate that kind of candid approach, you know? Um, some of these things might have value in certain sim, uh, situations, and some, maybe like the slide jack support stands, I'm just not a big, big believer in those. We keep a very small number of those on hand because we have a lot of very old parks with a lot of very old RVs around here in Southern Michigan, and we like to be able to take care of those folks when they come in so they don't have to special order something, you know? But today's video was telling you not to spend money on some of this stuff. You know, if you appreciate that kind of just care and consideration for you folks as consumers, I'd love it 
If you know, you're new with us, subscribe, like our video here, leave us a little note that says thanks if you haven't chatted about anything yet, or share this in like a social media group that you find beneficial. Maybe we can help some other people. So maybe take some of that money that we haven't spent or wasted on some other things. And this is one of those things, invest in a good sewer hose. You will not regret it. There's some benefits to these better. I like Rhino. Um, if whatever brand the people watching this if if there's a sewer hose brand you really believe in because again i'm not sponsored by any sort of person like this is not a sponsored message i don't have an amazon link where when you click on it and you buy this stuff i don't i don't get a portion of of whatever they sold and again there's nothing wrong with that that's how some people make their living that's fine that's not what this is i'm trying to provide you fair candid information to make you a better uh educated kind of buyer these better sewer hoses, um, one, they just physically hold their shape better. When you first pull that valve, there's like a wave of sludge <laughs> that will run its way down there. And it's nice to have a hose that just holds its shape a little bit better. The other thing is if you have one of those little centipede jobs that your hose has a constant kind of, uh, you know, decline, it's nice that the hose won't like constantly fall off of that thing when that wave of sludge comes in there. You don't have to monkey with it. The, the whole point is that you, you don't want to have to mess with this stuff. By the way, whenever you're messing with sewer stuff, always wear gloves, always, no question. But, um, the uh some of these things are more crush resistant unfortunately some people don't always respect campsites and some people go marching through your campsite uh as a as a bit of a shortcut and especially if it's dark they don't see they trip over this stuff they stomp on it they break it and you're left to clean up the mess a better hose is better able to resist that kind of thing and frankly if you're gonna get one get two in case you're stretched too far from the hookup point it's nice to have a backup every now and then but if you're gonna spend good money on one accessory this this is the one that i believe in a thousand percent of the time so i hope you found today's video in enlightening are you serious i couldn't have done that if i tried the the sun was not this bright when i first started this that was uh perfect pun timing right there i wish i'd have been prepared a little rim shot action but the the, the last thing i want to ask of you here is these are some things again that i've heard from regular returning customers from people in like owners forums things like that uh very little of this is my personal opinion i've tried as best i can to get that out of there although i do really strongly believe in a good sewer hose i don't think anyone's really going to argue with that though it's not exactly a controversial topic but um it is a bit of a crappy topic bam there's the rim shot all right uh but folks out there who are camping right now is there an accessory that you thought you just had to have is there something uh that uh you know you, you saw in a video that man you, you gotta spend your money on this and you found out it was just a perfectly good waste of money is there something else from your experience that you would like to share that maybe would help somebody else avoid making the same potential mistake or unnecessary expenditure i would love it if our community just kind of came together shared some notes and helped one another right there so until next time thank you for watching take care stay safe have fun, and best wishes from Bishes, everyone.